All right, so I seem to be struggling to have time to actually make these videos. Uh, I keep getting interrupted, so I'm going to just crack on ahead and complete some more questions before the next interruption. Okay, question 22 on topic 5. We have another internal resistance questions to start with. So just a quick review. Internal resistance basically means the total resistance that you'll get V total, I'll call it total, um, is the... The two V's inside, this V1 plus V2. Why do I know V1 plus V2? Well, if I had a circuit, which they keep not drawing for me, if I had a circuit with a resistor here, and I have an internal resistor, essentially this is a series circuit. And if you remember the rules for voltage in series, is V1 plus V2 equals the V supply, the V total. So V1 plus V2. But I'm not going to call it V1 and V2. I want to call this the main voltage, V main, V TPD, the terminal, whatever you want to call it. I'm keeping the word easy by saying main. Plus V lost. It's lost because it's actually inside the battery. I've lost some energy trying to uh, leave the battery. So the electrons that are trying to leave, they lose energy actually getting out. It's like you're just trying to push them out and they're too lazy. They don't want to fight, so you have to use some energy and then they come out. Very good. So this is the general consensus. For this rule, I can then replace with IR if I don't have anything. I can do V equals I, and this is the main one. The main one is for the big resistor, so I'll call it capital R. This is capital R over here, plus I. And then this is a smaller resistor, so I can use small r. When I do this, I can realize that, okay, well, the current is the same, because in the previous video I showed you, the current is the same. It's a CD circuit, one path only. The current has to flow through both. So then I can do a simplified way of doing V equals I, and then R plus small r, just a common factor. Now, keeping this in mind, whenever you see an internal resistance question, the first thing you're going to think to yourself, you have to find I. If you can find I, you can solve for the lost volts, you can solve for the main, you can find the total, everything. The current is the key. So that's what I'm looking out for now. I have a small r, I have a big r, I have the big V, and that's good, because I can actually use this formula. So that means that will give me I. Then why will that help me? Well, I need to find the voltage across the terminals. I need to find V main. V main is IR. So now I have unlocked the blueprint. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's find V equals IR plus R. I'm not going to write it out again. I'm just going to put the numbers in now. 48 is my total voltage. Equals. Uh, what am I looking at? I, which is what I need. So I can do shift solve again. R plus R. Or I can just divide. Well, anyway, where are we? 15 plus 1.3. If I do I equals 48 divided by 15 plus 1.3, hopefully I get the answer of I is 2.94 amps. Perfect. Now I can use this to find the voltage across the terminals. This is the V main. The voltage across the terminals will be the same voltage across this resistor, actually, by the way. So keep that in mind, because the voltage is in parallel. So this will be what I'm trying to find. I can do it like this. V equals IR. No problem. I have the I, which is 2.94. And I have the R, which is 15. And if I put them together, I will get 44. There we go. The next one is the N identical resistors are in parallel. How do I find them all? Well, actually, I explained this in the previous one when they were in series. When they were in series, you can just multiply the N times the R. If I have three resistors identical, three resistors of 10 ohms, I could do three times 10. Um, this is not the same. This is, um, what's it called? Parallel. In parallel, it's just basically divide. I have maybe three resistors and they're all 10 ohms each I will now just divide 10 divided by 3 once I do that I will get my answer this is only if they're identical if they're not identical then you have to do 1 over plus 1 over and get your answer that way so that's an easy way for you to find the total resistance in parallel like this if they were identical I will divide the resistance by 3 but this question is not identical question 24 this is you have to use the formula and no problem. So we can use the formula. R equals, in parallel, so we'll be able to, uh, I'll put a little bracket here, and I'll do 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, so forth. 1 over 24, 1 over 40, and then 1 over 16. 
close the bracket to the power of minus 1, that's basically 1 over, because the actual formula is 1 over r. This removes that 1 over. And you will get 7.7. .7. So there is the answer there, 24. Next, you make a parallel combination using a resistor. One is very large and one is very small. And I actually explained this in the other video as well. The equivalent resistance should be smaller than the smallest resistor every time. If I had two resistors, one over 100 plus one over one, for example, that's 100 and that's only one. And if I did this, your final answer will be zero point something, something, something. You'll get a small number, smaller than the smallest resistor. So B has a small resistance. It should be slightly smaller than B. Slightly less than B, and the answer here, D. There we go. Let's move on to the next one. Two identical bulbs are connected in parallel. Will, will they be brighter? Is it just same parallel? Yes, OK. So series or parallel, basically. Well, let's find out. Here is a series bulb circuit. So we're going to go back to the rules for voltage in series, and then we'll go to the rules for voltage in parallel. This is now parallel. What happens in both of them, by the way, you will see that in series, each electron coming out, let's say 10 volts. Let's say both are 10 volts. Each electron coming out has 10 volts. It will pass through the first bulb and use some of the energy. It will pass through the second bulb and use some of the energy. The voltage is being shared by the two. Maybe 5 volts and 5 volts. They're identical, so 5 volts and 5 volts. So that's kind of bright, but not so bright. Why? Look at this one now. Compare it to here. Each electron has 5 volts. Each electron has 5 joules of energy per coulomb. Each electron is coming here, and this one, not 5, sorry, it was 10, right? Each electron has 10. This will use all 10 because it is only one bulb in this path. The second path down here is the same. The electron that does not decide to go to the right, the electron maybe wants to go down and follow this path. That's no problem. It will follow this path. And again, in this path, there is only one bulb again. In that case, that one bulb will take the full 10 volts. So the idea here is parallel is going to be brighter because each electron will have a full 10 volts. 10 volts, 10 volts. And that's the rule. Voltage in parallel, right? Voltage in parallel, V1 equals V2 equals the battery. Voltage in series is V1 plus V2 equals the battery. That's, that's why. All right, so we have two resistors connected to the battery. What is the current in the 5 ohm resistor? Now, this is quite straightforward, actually, because we know that this is parallel, like I mentioned. This is 33 volts, and this is 33 volts. Each electron will have 33 volts passing here, and each electron will have 33 volts passing there. To find the current in the 5 ohm resistor, this is just a simple I equals V over R rule now. I will do 33 over 5. 33 over 5, I will get 6.6. The next one is same for the 10 ohm resistor, same thing, 33 over 10, 33 over 10, and I will get 3.3, of course, and there's there. What is the current supplied by the battery? Okay, well, now that I have an individual currents, I have 6.6 .6 and 3.3, well, I don't need to do uh, 1 over 10 plus 1 over 5, and then V divided by R, no need. I just add them together, because the current flowing here and the current flowing here are going to meet up and they're going to go through the battery. So that means I can just add. 6.6 .6 plus 3.3, .3, of course, is 9.9. 6.6 plus 3.3 .3 equals 9.9. .9. I1, I1 plus, I'm doing this backwards for some reason, I2 equals I total. 9.9, .9. very good. All right, let's continue onwards. Over here, what is the power dissipated across both resistors? Okay, so basically I need to find uh, the power. I have a voltage and I have a resistance. So out of the formulas for power, we have PIV, we have P equals V squared over R, and P equals I squared R. So I'm going to use V squared over R because I have a V and I have the R. I kind of have the R. I don't really have it yet. It's 24 squared divided by, I must do this now, right? 1 over 6, 1 over 8. I'll put that into my calculator to get the answer. 1 over 6, 1 over 8. And if you do that, you'll get 3.43. When I do that, 3.43, and I'll solve it, and hopefully you should get roughly 168 watts. There we go. As more resistors are added in the circuit, the resistance between A and B, well, again, this is parallel. Adding resistors in parallel will decrease the total resistance. Because if I, like I said, if I did 1 over 10, 
plus 1 over 10. Uh, that will be, if you remember the rule, um, you can just divide by 2 if they're identical. This will be, this will be 5. If I added another one, 1 over 10, 1 over 10, this is terribly drawn, plus 1 over 10, I'm adding 3. Technically, you're doing 10 divided by 3, actually. And you will get a, a, a smaller answer, yeah, 3.33, for example. You will get less. The resistance will decrease if I keep adding more resistors. If I keep adding more, it will decrease. Okay. 32. Two light bulbs, not two light bulbs, I can't even count. Three light bulbs are connected in series with a battery. And this is saying what's going to happen if I short this wire. This is a very important thing to know. Um, let's say the electrons are coming this way. They're coming up here and they will shine through the bulb. Okay. And normally they would have shined through all three bulbs. Each bulb would have a resistance, right? But in this case, we're skipping that bulb. We're going to go here. Current is lazy. It's going to pick the easiest way it can. If it sees a bulb and it sees a free path, it will take the free path and it will go right all the way around to here. The current will not go through the bulb if it can avoid it. So imagine this being like a, I don't know, a chemistry room, chemistry exam. Then you have a, a physics exam and then you have an English exam. If there's an option to skip the physics exam and get 100, you will do it, right? You will not do this exam. You will skip it. So that's exactly what the current is doing. It is not going to be using the energy. It will skip it. That means V over R, they all have a resistance, right? Instead of having three resistors, I only have two. Resistance in series, you add. This would have been, let's for example, say that, let's say they're one ohm each, yeah? This would have been one ohm, one ohm, and one ohm. It would have been I equals V over, and this original situation would have been 3R. But now, I equals 1 over, the V over, not that one anymore. This is gone. It is now 2R. Look at that. My resistance has decreased. If my resistance decreases, my current increases. I will have more current, inversely proportional. Long story short, it means that they will burn brighter than they were before. They will have more current. They will be brighter. Very nice. Now, where are we here? Now, looking at this one, we have... Uh, 10 ohm resistor attached to 20 ohm in series and then to 30 in parallel. Then it's connected. What is the current through the 20 ohm resistor? So the 20 ohm resistor basically is this here. This current flowing through here is a trick. It is the total current in this branch. It's the total current in the branch. So you need to be very careful with that one, all right? So what we're going to do is find the current through the, the 20 ohm resistor. Let's do it. Uh, I equals V over R. I equals V over R. We have the V, 120 volts, divided by the total resistance in this branch. The total resistance in this branch. What we're going to do? We're going to do 30. 120 divided by 30. By doing 120 divided by 30, hopefully you will get 4 amps. Yes? Uh, 12 over 3, basically. And uh, Nice. Two resistors are now connected here and here. What is the total resistance? Well, remember, two resistors equal, it will be half, R over two, right? So you'll have two R plus this one over R, one over R, that becomes R over two, R over two, or I can just say 0 0.5, yeah? So two R plus 0 0.5 R, adding them together is of course 2.5 R. So that's the answer for question 34. Now, question 35. What is this? We have a battery current when the switch of the figure is switched on and closed. When you close it, you have just created two separate sections now. Um, actually, it's important to know, before the switch was closed, you would find the total resistance by seeing that this is parallel. No, parallel. This is series. So 3 plus 3 is 6. And then 5 plus 1 is 6. I've seen this in an exam before. You would find this. Plus, then you will do this, how? 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. That's what you would have done, because they are clearly two separate branches. But that's not what this question is asking, is it? This question is saying when the switch is closed. So we've closed the switch. Now we have, well, these two are not connected in series anymore, because there is a wire between them. So now we have these two in parallel, followed by the wire, and then these two in parallel. So that's what I need to do now. I need to literally do 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5, and you solve that to the power of minus 1, plus the next parallel section, because there's a wire in between them, so it's basically the equivalent of me doing this. If I had 
this is my first resistor. And then I had my other resistor here. And then I'm going to do like that. And I'm going to do that. And another resistor. And another resistor. I'm just redrawing this by just spreading out the wire, making it a bit longer. This is what we're doing. And it goes up to the battery. Yeah. So this is here. The bottom part is here. These two are parallel. And they are in series with these two, which are both in parallel. Series you add, this plus this. So let's find it. We have 1 over 3 plus 1 over 1 to the power of minus 1. Uh, again, you can just directly fire that into your calculator, and hopefully you will get the current, not the current, you'll get the resistance. Once you find the total resistance, I guess the total resistance is uh, 2.63, or 2.63 uh, ohms. V over R. V over R because that's the current it's asking for. I will do 24, why 24? Well, the battery says 24, uh, divided by 2.63. If I put that into my calculator, I should get roughly 9.14. I'm gonna stop this video there. Thank you.